welcome to day number four. Welcome to day number seven. Day number 12. Welcome to Do It Heartily. Israelites were able to get through this thing. God did mighty acts for them. But just like James Turner, James Turner forgot about what he did have, his sweet wife, his child, their home, the job that God had provided for him along with the church family that he had. And James Turner focused on what he didn't have, and that was gold. And boys and girls, that is exactly what happened with the Israelites. The Israelites forgot about what they did have and they focused on what they didn't have. The Israelites did this thing. They had so many things that God had done for them, and they forgot all about it. They focused on what was back in Egypt. King David even tells about this thing in Psalms chapter 106, verse number seven, where he says, they remember not the multitude of God's mercies. Our fathers understood not the wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even the Red Sea. Then in Psalms chapter 106, verse number 13, David continues and says, they soon forgot his works. They soon forgot his works. They waited not for counsel. Then 106, verse number 21, the Bible says that they forget God their Savior, which had done great things for them in Egypt. Just like James, boys and girls, the Israelites, they forgot about what they did have and focused on what they didn't. Sometimes when a person forgets about God and all that he has done for them, they'll do things they normally wouldn't do. And King David, he describes that for us. He gives us kind of like a history lesson. There are some things that the people of Israel did when they forgot about all the things that God had done for them. They doubted God's ability to save them when they got to the Red Sea. Here they were facing the Red Sea, and they're like, oh, God has brought us out here to die. They forgot about all the plagues that God had given to the Egyptians to let the Israelites go. They doubted God's ability to feed them in the desert. They were always complaining, saying, oh, we're going to starve to death. They rebelled against Moses and Aaron, and they're the ones that God had sent to lead the people out of Egypt, and yet they rebelled against them. They doubted God's ability to get them into the promised land. They murmured and complained constantly. They didn't even trust that God had their best in mind. They learned to do evil by watching the heathen people around them and then started to do the evil that they watched those folks do. When they did get into the promised land, they let the heathen live right there with them instead of driving them away like God had asked them to do. They even worshiped the idols of their neighbors and did unspeakable acts of evil to worship those idols. In the middle of all of this, God brings the people together at the base of a mountain to let them know with his own voice what he expected from them. God brought them all together and said, hey, I expect some things out of you. He gave them some commands. And you know the 10 commandments that God gave them. The first two of them, God said, hey, 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 I am the Lord your God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God says that he wanted to be in first place in their life. He said, no other gods before me. And then right after that, he says to them, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. He said that they weren't supposed to create some idol and then bow down to worship it. Those are just the first two commandments. And as soon as Mr. Moses went up on the mountain, to receive the Ten Commandments in a written form, the people started to do the unthinkable. They gathered together all of their gold at the base of the mountain. They got their gold together, they gave it to Mr. Aaron, and they asked him to make a golden calf for them to worship. 
The Bible tells us about it in Psalms chapter 106, verse number 19. David's reminding them about the things that they did. It says, they made a calf in Horeb and worshiped the golden image. Now, I'm telling you, boys and girls, whenever you get gold fever, here's my, here's my gold nugget for the day. Whenever you get gold fever, you'll do things. And Israel took all of their gold, gave it to Mr. Aaron and said, make us a golden calf. And he did. Can you believe it? Can you believe just after hearing God's words where he said, no other gods before me, thou shalt not make it of the inner, any graven image. They heard the voice of God say that, and yet they went ahead and they had Aaron make for them a golden calf right after they heard God say that. You would say, Mr. Nathan, I would never do anything like that. I would never. I mean, if God spoke to me and said, hey, I don't want you to do this, I would never do it. I would never forget it. There's no way I would. You know what? We do it all the time. Because God tells you that you're supposed to obey your parents. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. One of the Ten Commandments, honor thy father and thy mother. I remember a time that when my daughter, Laura Land, we call her Doodlebug at the house. When Doodlebug was just tiny, she was crawling around on the floor and she found an outlet. And so she crawls up to the outlet and she looks at it and she's got drool everywhere. Her tiny little fingers are all, she's like, ah, and she goes to touch that outlet. And I saw her and I said, no. And she got back, she looked at me and she was like, oh. and went right back to touch it. I was like, what are you doing? So I took her hand and I popped her on the hand and she cried. She couldn't believe I had done that mean thing to her. And then she looked at me and went right back to touch it again. I said, no. And I popped her hand. I said, don't touch it. She cried and cried and looked up at me and went right to touch it again. We went through this for about five minutes. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I picked up Doodlebug. I figured she was so hard-headed. She was going to electrocute herself or die trying. And I put her in a little crib, gave her some toys. And I said, all right, we're going to talk about this a little bit later. I mean, we do the same exact thing. We're just like the Israelites. We have God's word, and yet we forget about what he's told us to do. And when we forget, we focus on other things, things that are not good for us. There's times that we forget about how God can take care of us and we get scared and we doubt that God could keep us safe. Sometimes we doubt that God can provide for us. Sometimes we even disobey those that are in authority over us. We murmur and complain just like the Israelites did. We learn to do evil things by watching other people, maybe it be TV or our friends, and we do the evil things that we see them doing. We make friends with people who don't know Christ as their Savior, and we let them influence us. And although we probably don't take all of our gold and make an idol and worship it, we do take other things and let them get between us and our relationship with the Lord. 